Hello, and welcome back to the Good Five Cent Scar Newscast. My name is Juliana Olpore. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up, a spotlight on the URI Sailing Center, a glimpse into one of URI's newest cultural clubs, a sneak peek at the URI Farmer's Market, the newest business opening in the Emporium, and as always, stay tuned for your Brody Sports Corner. The URI Sailing Center has many resources for students, including free kayaking, paddleboarding, and more. Aiden Cahill took a trip to the Sailing Center to find out more. You may know the University of Rhode Island is one of the few dozen Sea Grant institutions across the country. And you may know that our Bay Campus is home to RV Endeavor, a research vessel that has been conducting research since the 70s. But did you know that we are also home to a sailing center with sailboats and kayaks free to use for everyone on campus with a student ID. Uh, the, the sailing center is open for open recreation. So anybody that has sailing skills or ability, and if you don't, you can also come down and kayak and paddle board. And uh, we're open pretty much from 12 to five every day, including the weekends. The sailing center has far more than just recreational opportunities, however, also hosting a sailing club, team, and class. Um, the sailing team competes out of the sailing center. There's a sailing club that's part of the student senate organization. Um, there is a kinesiology class where students can learn to sail and get credit. And that happens in the fall and in the spring. Um, it's part of the kinesiology program. The class code is KIN 210 and that's beginner sailing. It's a two credit course. So once you've taken the class, then you can come down instead of just having the option of checking out a kayak or a paddleboard, you can also check out one of the sailboats that we have down here for open recreation. If you'd like to get out on the water yourself, there's still time. So uh, the sailing center is always open, but the activity on the water kind of stops usually about the first week in November. Okay. The Sailing Center is only about a 15 minute drive south from campus on Salt Pond Road, just south of downtown Wakefield. It's open from 12 to 5 daily, year round. So why not get out on the water? We are the ocean state after all. The URI Italian Club focuses on celebrating and sharing the Italian culture with URI students through hosting many different events. Alexa Patamiano spoke with the club's social media coordinator to find out more. <music> My name is Sydney. I'm the social media coordinator for the Italian Club. It's a great group of people. Um, we learn a lot about the Italian culture. We learn a lot about the language. Um, we delve into things like, um, like colloquial things like profanities and ways to address people. And we play Italian games. Like we played, we had like a bocce tournament before. That was super fun. Um, and yeah, we do. We host like federal hill trips. We do, you know, recipes, things like that. It's a great time. My favorite part of being an Italian club is, like I said, I'm going to be studying abroad. So I absolutely love immersing myself in the culture. Um, I love learning about like what, you know, because like in school you learn about like the technical things about what people do in Italy and the language. But being an Italian club, it really exposes you to kind of like the day-to-day -day of like what just a regular Italian might be like. And I think that's really awesome. Um, this past April, during our Italian Club Bash on the quad, um, we had a little bit of a bocce tournament, which is really awesome with a lot of our members. Um, I think uh, last fall semester, we held a trip to Federal Hill, and we went to a restaurant, we all sat down, it was super nice, great to eat with everybody. Um, we've had a profanity day where we literally just learned Italian swear words, that was pretty popular. Um, it's all such a great time, we do bingo, get to know each other, it's awesome. The URI Free Farmer's Market occurs every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. All of the food is harvested within 24 hours of the market and is grown within a mile of the URI campus. Lucas Maciello has more. I'm standing here at the URI Quad where students are waiting in line for the Free Farmer's Market. The Farmer's Market, which is held every Thursday, offers fresh produce grown on campus to any students who need it. We first started as a gleaning effort, so being able to collect the produce that the class wasn't using and mobilize it to give away, but with the involvement of some nutrition classes, some volunteers, myself and Kelly, we put this event together and it's grown every year for the past three years, starting with two students 
on for credit. Now we have three paid positions and 25 students for credit supporting this program. Chef Aaron from Dining comes every week and takes some of our fresh produce and creates something amazing with it. Last week we had like a hot honey fruit cup with some of the fruit coming out of the high tunnel. And with the help of dining and everything that we did here, we won a Sustainability College Campus Award. We're really attempting to be pioneers of mobilizing food uh, from our own community. So all of this produce was harvested less than 24 hours ago and less than a mile away. Yeah, we're broke graduate students that have a fixed income, so any free produce, fresh produce that we can get to is all the better. Yeah. I'm so psyched to be getting some fresh free produce that I can cook up for dinner later, and it's free, which means it's for me. Yeah, we got good apples. It's really good. They're great. Come Ups is an alumni-owned vintage and streetwear store that recently opened in the Emporium. Jake Fahey spoke with one of the store's owners to find out more. Whether it's the price of everything going up again or new fashion trends happening, more and more people now are turning to thrift shopping. One recent URI alum, Matthew West, is taking advantage of this by recently opening up his own thrift store called Come Ups in the Emporium near the school, selling a vast array of vintage clothes at cheap prices. And this is anything but new to him. Um, so I've been a reseller for the past seven years. Um, I've had multiple online stores and I actually started reselling vintage sports cards when I was about nine years old and I was traveling all around the country and then once I got to high school I started like a clothing company and once I got to college um, I started doing a lot of e-commerce work and my senior year I started meeting with professors to make a business plan to either decide to do to scale up my e-commerce or go on a different venture. And the last semester before I graduated, I was taking truckloads of 10 kids five times a day back to my house in Narragansett. And I was setting up my living room like a thrift store. And the idea kind of sparked that like, what if there was a thrift store on campus? Cause the nearest thrift store is like 40 minutes away. And a lot of students don't have cars to drive out there. He managed to acquire the place right around the time he graduated early this year, having to hunt for the realtor to do so. I was coming up here every single day looking in like, because there's a few places that were like dark and it didn't seem like business was going on. And so I came up here every single day looking in them, look, trying to find a phone number. And I finally found the realtor's phone number. And yeah, it was expensive because I've never done something like this but um, definitely well worth the venture. Matt is very open to any kind of customer. He also wants to avoid any kind of pitfalls that other thrift stores typically fall into as well, mainly regarding prices and inventory. My business model, I wanted to have something for everyone. I wanted to have something for the grandma or grandpa from Narragansett that just wants to come in and buy a dollar tea or a couple dollar pair of shorts but then I also wanted to have it curated. Like I don't like going into thrift stores for three hours and then I only find one piece that I like. So I wanted to have, if you do want something more expensive, we have something more expensive, but also if you're just looking for a piece for cheap, I wanted it to fit all avenues. He hopes he'll be able to run the store for the next few years, possibly even expanding and setting up new stores too. Um, I haven't decided. We've thrown out a couple ideas like either Massachusetts, Connecticut, or um, in Providence. However, come up isn't the only thing that Matt is currently focusing on, as he has other aspirations in mind. So I plan on taking the L stats in June, and if all goes well, I'll be able to go to law school within the next year, and I want to start. My dad's a lawyer, so I wanted to start like a. Um, not criminal law, but more business law, and try and branch out into different avenues that way. The store itself has proven to be popular among URI students, as many of them are showing up to buy clothes, shoes, hats, and anything else the store has to offer. And Matt is looking forward to anything that happens next. Um, come on down. We got steals and deals for everybody. We are always restocking every single day, and we're getting shipments in constantly, so there's always going to be something for someone. Come Ups is open Monday to Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Emporium. And next week, they're running a sale for anyone who brings their campus ID card. For Rody 5 Cent Cigar News, this is Jake Fahey, signing off.
And now over to Nathan Robillard with your Roadie Sports Corner. Thanks, Juliana. Hello and welcome to this weekend's edition of Roadie Sports Corner, the number one place for weekly updates on all things Roadie Athletics. I'm Nathan Robillard. <laughs> URI Women's Volleyball opened conference play over the weekend, hosting a pair of matches against George Mason. For more on the matches, here's Ryan Palillo. The URI Volleyball team faced off against George Mason University this past Saturday at 12 p.m. in Keeney Gym. This game was part two of a back-to-back -back set of home games against GMU, which also opened up conference play for both teams. Both the Rams and the Patriots were itching to get into the win column early on in Atlantic 10 play. The first set started off fairly even, with both sides coming out energetic. Both the Rams and the Patriots were able to stay neck and neck throughout this set. With the score after 26 rallies all tied up at 13 to 13. George Mason, however, surged after plays like this monster kill from GMU, exploding to eventually win the set 25 to 17. In the second set, however, Rhodey responded with much more of an explosive start, with big plays from junior Samantha Blahut and freshman Matty Disu, who made a statement in this game with a team-high 17 kills. George Mason hung in there, however, as the score eventually sat at 12-12. However, the Rams were on a mission, with even more big plays from Disu. The Rams took the second set, 25-19. to 19. The third set got off strikingly similar to the last two. With both teams tied 1-1, to one, this seemed like a vital point in the game. Eventually, both teams not only found themselves locked up at 15-15, to 15, but eventually 24-24. to 24. Sadly for the Rams, a big block by the Patriots would end the third set with a score of 27 to 25. The fourth set didn't last quite as long as the previous three, as despite a big effort from the Rams, the Patriots went up 16 to nine, and after a few heartbreaking aces from multiple GMU serves, the set ends in GMU's favor, 25-18. Although a Saturday afternoon home loss can be crushing, there are plenty of positives to take away. In a post-game interview conducted by the Cigar Zone, Nathan Robillard, Junior libero Hannah Blaney had this to say. Yeah, I mean, our freshmen, like, shout out to them. They came in, like, very confident, very optimistic. They're so fun. And they, we, like, all mesh so well. So there is, like, so much knowing that we have each other's back. And it's, like, it's genuine, you know, on and off the court. Like, we just like to spend time with each other. So I think that definitely helps. Rhodey Volleyball's next match sees them traveling to D.C. as they face off against George Washington this coming Saturday. They'll be looking to hopefully grab their first Atlantic 10 victory. This has been Ryan Palillo with the Roadie Sports Corner. URI women's soccer was also in action, opening their home conference slate versus Duquesne on Thursday. Peter Gigliotti was field side. But this game, I honestly, we're just a better team all the way around. You know, obviously, we couldn't finish. We had 19 shots. You know, at some point, we got to finish a shot. Like, we're dominating games, you know, and just not getting the results. So. URI women's soccer lost in heartbreaking fashion on Thursday in their game against the Duquesne Dukes. The two teams were in a scoreless standoff until the 84th minute when freshman Anna Bundy capitalized on a roadie misstep, winning the game 1-0 and making roadies record 0-5-5 on the year. Rhodey's offensive struggles have been no secret, as the Rams, who are without five starting caliber players due to injury, have only scored two goals in the last 11 games and remain the only team in the Atlantic 10 without a victory. So we're going to go back to the drawing board, keep working on finishing. It's literally the only thing we're missing right now. I mean, we're playing well defensively. We're not giving up much goals. You know, attacking-wise, we're creating a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's just that final piece. Coach Megan Jesse knows that this team has the potential to boost their offensive production and plans to work on this in the coming practices. Um, I think we can use those mistakes as lessons and things to work on at practice that way that they don't happen again in the future. URI continues to look for their first win of the season this week with a pair of A-10 matchups against Davidson and George Mason. From inside the URI Soccer Complex, I'm Peter Gigliotti with the Rhodey Sports Corner. Now let's take a look at some other scores around campus this week. Football saw their unbeaten start in the CAA come to a close on Saturday in a top 25 matchup at Villanova. 
Men's soccer returned home on Saturday, battling to a scoreless draw versus LaSalle in the pouring rain. Women's soccer opened up their home conference slate on Thursday, falling to Duquesne in a heartbreaking fashion. The lone goal for the visitors won the game with just six minutes to play. Finally, men's golf finished 11th out of 12 schools at this weekend's McDonald Invitational. That's all we have for this week's edition of Roadie Sports Corner. For live updates across all URI athletics, be sure to follow us on social media at Cigar Sports. Juliana, back to you. That's all we have for you this week at the Five Cent Cigar Newscast. As always, make sure to check us out at RoadieCigar.com and follow us on social media at Roadie Cigar. From Kingston, Rhode Island, I'm Juliana Lapore. Have a great week, Roadie.